Well, a Christian can argue for the truth in ignorance. He can certainly, or she can certainly try. Uh, but it's not going to be very convincing <laughs> if there's no um, evidence or no um, other kind of um, warrant behind your claims. So it's very important to know why you believe certain things. This is something that the Apostle Peter says, tells us in his first letter, he, when, when he says in 1 Peter 3.15 that every Christian should be prepared always to give an answer to anyone who asks for a reason for the hope that is within us. So uh, that means that not only specialized, specialized Christians or very intellectually minded Christians should be able to do that, but everyone should uh, in some sense be prepared to, to answer questions. You know, we should... Uh, the Christian life is such that um, when Jesus um, is lived out in your life, that people will notice that you have hope. And Peter says, people will then ask questions. And don't be afraid of them, but be prepared to answer and give a reason uh, for why you have this hope. So a Christian should be prepared to give that answer. But in giving that answer, uh, it's not enough simply to know ourselves. We should also have some sort of understanding of who the other person is that we are giving this answer to, so, so that this person will be able to understand us. Um, and that's also something that Peter the Venerable tried very much to do. He realized that in Western European Christendom, people could not give a good answer to the claims of Islam because nobody knew what they were. <laughs> he said that there was no one who answered because there was no one who understood. And he really wanted to change that. He, he saw it as a very big um, defect in Christendom that there was no one who answered because there was no one who understood. He said that there is a lack of zeal among his contemporaries. They only know one language and that, therefore they cannot understand the Muslims and therefore they cannot answer what the, the, the problems, the questions that, that are raised in this encounter. So in order to do something about it, he went to Spain in 1142 and he commissioned the first Latin translation of the Quran which was a major step um, in the encounter and dialogue between the two uh, religions. Um, he tells us that the team of translators also included a Muslim called Muhammad, and it cost him a, a lot of money and time and energy to get this done. He did not only go to Spain uh, on the business of getting the Quran translated, there was other business because as abbot of Cluny, he also had business in that region, but it was also part of his, his goal to get the Quran translated so that people could start to understand. And um, this is a very important aspect in, in our um, efforts to communicate the gospel that we are able to understand other people who are not following Jesus, who are not trusting Jesus.